In this video, I'm going to share with you how to prevent sore Achilles and calves for hiking boots, especially for women. I got a reader comment or viewer comment. Thank you so much. This is from Debbie Pengeli or Pengeyi. Uh, sorry if I'm totally mangling your name, but Debbie, here's your question. Hi, great videos, thank you. Any advice for women's boots? I have a UK size seven and a half and I was advised by a good outdoor store to get the right size up, one full size, and I need to get men's boots in the UK. After wearing them, very sore Achilles and lower calf, still a problem six months on. Thank you. Debbie, yeah, that pain, whoo boy. I'm going to give you five different tips and also a sixth story at the end of this video to share with you some of my points. I mean, obviously I'm doing a remote diagnosis here, but boy, oh boy, having a sore Achilles and calf can be a total crippler and ruin your experience in the outdoors. First thing, let's step back. If your boot, step number one, is worn on the ends here, let me turn the light so you can see it a little bit better. I've just about worn out my keen boots and I've worn the corners of these things down. And that is a big, big problem because that's just how I walk. And I do the same thing in my runners. I wear the outside corner and then also the toe strike area or the mid strike area. First thing is if your boots are worn out, hiking in them will actually cause severe calf pain and Achilles pain because your foot is not rolling correctly. Instead, your foot is striking subtly differently and it only takes a millimeter or two of the bottom of your sole of your shoe to actually cause that problem. That is a big factor. I know when I'm running or jogging or hiking and man, my calf or Achilles is killing me. That is the ding, ding, ding that my boots on shoes are solely worn out. That's just the way it is, unfortunately. You can see I've worn out my Vasque boots I'm going to cry because they don't make these anymore. I've got to find some new ones. I've worn that corner out. So that is a bummer for me too. The second thing that I can recommend is using a replacement sole insert. So instead of having the regular foam that come with your boots is actually get super feet. I will put a link below in the description, but super feet really help me out and I prefer the green super feet that take the most volume in the boot. Uh, ladies, a lot of times they'll use the blue or the pink super feet because the blue are a little bit lower profile and the pink, tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe the pink are designed more for the ladies. But putting a super feet insert into your boot can make a big difference in how you're walking because it doesn't take but a degree or two of malcorrection or misalignment soon you're striking instead of striking flat you're slightly off and that repetitive motion just like carpal tunnel syndrome can actually happen to your calves and your achilles and it can really kill you step number three is make sure you do a kick test hopefully you did this when you bought your boot if not sorry to hear that one of the problems is a lot of times stores try and sell you a men's design boot for ladies. Ladies have a different foot structure than men. There's a classic saying in outdoor wear that says, hey, for ladies, let's just shrink it and pink it. It's the stupidest thing ever. It's just the mentality of men making things for women. There's, oh, just make it smaller and make it pink or lavender. Like, good Lord. You really want something that is designed for women because women's physiology is different. The proportion of your heel to your foot box and the length of your foot is simply different from men. That's just the way it is. So when you buy your boots, try this. Lace up your boots how you think they should be laced. More on that in a moment. And then begin kicking the ground. If you kick the ground, bang, bang, bang. The first kick, your toe should not strike the ground at all. The second kick, your toes might touch the end of your shoe. And the third, it'll probably contact. If your foot is slipping around and you feel that bang on the first kick, 
your boots are definitely the wrong size. Because as you're walking, if you start getting that toe bang, what's gonna happen is your calf is going, you subconsciously, you're going to start tightening your calf to pull back your toes so you don't bang at the end of your boots. And that is a misery fest. So that kick test is a big deal. Four, like I said, make sure to try and find women's boots. Do not size up just because, hey, this is gonna work, but at least stuff double lined socks, like a right sock and a smart wool sock, link in the description, because if you just get a bigger boot and your foot's all slopping around, I can guarantee you, you're going to get trashed. And the number one factor, this is the thing you've been waiting for, wait for the story, is if you're tying your boots incorrectly, you can severely injure your calf and your Achilles. I've got another link below about plantar fasciitis in this uh, video description, but when you're tying your boots, this is a huge mistake for people to make is you're not tying your boots correctly as if you're, and I'm gonna demonstrate it this way, is if you're tying your boot with your toe pointed out and then you crank your laces, when you walk, the amount of tension on your Achilles, especially the attachment point here, and where your Achilles converts to your lower calf, where it goes from thin to thick, will be severely injured. And I wouldn't say permanently, I'm not a doctor obviously, but that is a huge, huge mistake to make. Instead, the most important thing, there are two ways to do this, or two points to do this is when you put your boot on, flex your toe back as far as you can and then lace the heck out of your laces and tighten them up because now you've allowed for the full range of motion. If you tie your boots tight with your toe pointing out or even slightly canted out and you tie those things tight, I promise you, you will injure your Achilles. Don't do that step on a rock, step on a log, a stair, whatever, crank your shoe out and tie them. Big factor here, when you're going uphill, make sure to critically loosen up your laces and tighten them so your toe is flexed back as far as possible. If you're expecting to go downhill for several hours, point your toe slightly down and then re-snug your laces to prevent toe bang from happening. Yes, does that mean adjusting your laces? But believe me, you will definitely thank me for not injuring your foot. And now the story, when I was in Greenland using these exact boots, I was sitting in that exact MSR, well, not these exact boots, this exact model, sitting in that MSR hubba, and I had my toes pointed out, and I was lacing my boot, knowing that I was gonna go over rocky terrain, I lace the heck out of those, and by midday I'm walking, and then in four steps I go like, ah! And I literally fall and almost eat it. I thought I had blown my Achilles. Come to find out, I tighten my toes like this, so as I was walking, that torquing and wrenching damaged my Achilles, and I got to hobble for another 40 miles or about 75 kilometers. That stinks. So. Story for you of my mistake, don't make that mistake. All these factors will make a big, big difference. I do talk about how to correctly lace up your boots and everything in Adventure Expedition 1. Check out links below. Uh, the, book, the book is available in the UK. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I am a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links in the descriptions to my books, Antarctic Tears, Lost in Windy Corner, Adventure Expedition 1, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, and the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides. As well as, please check out my show, Antarctic Tears and World Beyond. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more of this information and prevent foot injuries.